James Walner is a senior fellow at the R Street Institute. He's a writer at the Washington Examiner and a uh, teacher at the American University School of Public Affairs. We had him booked to come on today, even in uh, advance of all of the uh, insanity yesterday, because there was a lot happening in U.S. politics, and we thought it would be worth uh, chatting with someone about it. Obviously, the conversation today is going to be very different than it might have been otherwise. Uh, James, good morning to you. I guess I, I start with a very basic question. Where's your Where's your mind at this morning as you kind of – Hopefully you got a little bit of sleep last night. You woke up this morning. What was the first thing to come to mind? Well, it was just disbelief. And it's been reeling, to be honest with you, uh, to see what happened yesterday. And it really does, I think, strike to the core of uh, of our politics here in America. In terms of uh, just, I mean, the, the developments overnight, we've had a series of resignations uh, at the White House we have uh, reports that more might be coming. The uh, C- CBS and CNN have both reported that the 25th Amendment is being considered. I don't think they're they're not reporting it's imminent or anything, but certainly that it's being discussed among the cabinet. And I can just keep thinking, James, as I, I have much the same sense of view. I mean, I, I'm almost at a loss for words, which is not great when you do what I do. Um, we've got 13 more days to go, and the best we can hope for is that maybe yesterday let a little, little pressure out, but I'm not convinced we don't see more, if not exactly like we saw yesterday, than more violence. Right, and, uh, you know, we've discussed in the past um, how Trump's rhetoric post-election is something that I think has not been helpful, that has not been good, and I think that certainly is the case here. Uh, But, you know, yesterday we heard on the coverage a lot of calls for Trump to be a statesman, as he should have been, just an ordinary human being, and just to stand up and to try to calm the situation down using his position. That's what presidents do. And when I hear talk of the 25th Amendment, when I hear talk of impeachment right now, you know, it it strikes me that with like a little less than two weeks, you know, to go here or right at two weeks to go here, that – That would be like pouring gasoline onto the fire, if that makes sense. And that may be a controversial thing to say, but it seems to me the best way to to deal with Trump, if you are an opponent of Trump's, is to to forget him, to let him go, kind of just to let him go. And then to try to then pick up the pieces and deal with the country that we have and to try to address the the grievances when real and legitimate and and to try to uh you know deal with the grievances when imagined and not legitimate that have fueled his rise. You're absolutely right. Um if if there was an attempt to either rush an impeachment or to to invoke the the 25th amendment on the one look I mean James I'm I'm not trying to, to take every position at once here I I understand why people want him out of office immediately because of the obvious danger that he he and his rhetoric can pose but you're absolutely right I mean we we can't be blind to the fact that attempting to remove this guy could easily have the unintended consequence of, of provoking exactly the kind of violence that the those who want him removed are seeking to avoid yeah, and that's what I've been trying to impress upon uh, you know, friends and family and people that I know um, in the hours since this has all gone down, which is life is extraordinarily complicated. And oftentimes it deals with a lot of imperfect choices. And there is no one, you know, best way that is cost free. And while, you know, if, you know, while many people may feel that they want Trump out of office immediately, as you said, the question you have to ask yourself is, well, what's the impact of that? What what does that do? If Trump's saying simply, which is something American politicians have been doing since Andrew Jackson and before, go down to the Capitol, right, and pressure from the outside in. This is something that the civil rights organizations did, although they stopped the word that you're supposed to stop and not turn violent in this way. Um, you know, if that was all it took for them to go to the Capitol and then to take it the next step and break into this building, the sacred space where I work for over a decade that I love dearly. If that's all it took, I'm wondering what the 25th Amendment, which has never been invoked, would do. I'm wondering what a rushed impeachment would do. And as Americans, I think right now we need to figure out how to come together, not to subsume our differences, but to acknowledge and cherish those differences and learn how to deal with each other as equals. You know, one of the things that I've been wondering about, and you, you just referenced it there, that you know, you'd worked in, in the Capitol for some time, 
I, I'm not going to ask you to betray anything that you shouldn't, uh, but I'm, I'm just kind of wondering in terms of what you would have expected the security at the Capitol to be like during your time there compared with what it actually turned out to be yesterday. You know, I've I've been in the in the Capitol complex uh, for for business once or for tourism or whatever. right? like uh, and there, there's pretty thorough security around it. And just to see yesterday the crowd waltz in like they own the place. Like, I don't know the building complex well, but I knew it well enough to be shocked for someone who has spent a lot of time there. It must have been a really surreal afternoon for you. Well, I think it, it really was, and, and two things, and the and the images of people, and I know, you know, I I certainly were was hoping and praying for people to be remain safe and 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 to not be hurt, but to see people just desecrating the the space as well in terms of their behavior and this incredibly disrespectful was so offensive to me, but. You know, prior to the the mid 1990s, there was you could walk into the Capitol without a security guard, without a metal detector, <clears throat> I should say. And then after the 1990s, we had metal detectors. 9/11, there was a lot more security. But there's a tension here. <clears throat> there's a tension here, and there's only so much that security can do with huge crowds of people, right? There's only so much that, that you can do. I mean, they're going to. I mean, they were breaking windows. They were coming through. Unless you live in like a brutalism type concrete structure. It's going to be hard to secure that from the outside with a minimal amount of people. But I would remind your listeners that Congress is a, a is a legislature, and, and obviously the people shouldn't be breaking in and desecrating it and, and threatening its members. But you can't secure Congress from the outside because Congress is the outside. It's not like the executive branch. It's not like the Department of uh, State or the Pentagon, where you have an administrative function that you have been charged by the people with carrying out, and therefore you are protected and allowed to do that. Congress's whole point is to hear grievances of the people and then to adjudicate them. And we have a right of petition in the Constitution. And so there's a fine line between security at the Capitol complex and those constitutional obligations that the institution has. In terms of uh, of your, look, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's something uh, that Canada had to deal with after an attack on our parliament a few years ago by um, a self radicalized Islamist. How do you balance security versus uh, the need to to have the people have access to the people's house in a democracy? In terms of what you might expect to see. Um, I think you're absolutely right. That being said, I imagine it's going to be a pretty awkward morning for the senior leadership of the Capitol Police today. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And this is something that I've seen and I've mixed feelings about. On one hand, their job is to secure the members and the staff. And they, I think they did that in, in, in talking to um, members last night and this morning. It seems like they were quickly ushered away and, and, and secured. But on the other hand, they weren't – I mean, this was – you plan for all eventualities. And while we would hope, we would certainly hope that this wouldn't happen, looking at the coverage, I mean, I, I think that, that what we saw yesterday certainly surprised me. But if I were in charge of a security force, which I'm not, it seems to me that, that you would anticipate this kind of thing and maybe have more reinforcements, maybe have more manpower. I'm not privy to all of the details about – what their resources are at this particular moment, but call in the D.C. Metro Police, whatever you need to do, like in an inauguration type setting with height with the country on a knife's edge like it is right now. um, I think that it's uh, it's important to plan ahead. And that's not what we saw. We've got about a minute left here. Uh, Any any hopes or expectations of what we're going to see over the next few days? Well, what I hope for, what I hope for dearly is that this event, can help remind people that politics is important and that there are two ways of solving this, resolving our disagreements. One is by violence and the other is by debate and politics. And usually in American history, when we are confronted with instances of violence, whether it's in the 60s or the 70s or the 19th century or before, we redouble our commitment to our politics. And for our politics to work, we have to have institutions that work, like Congress. What I fear what I fear is that this episode will be used now as, as a cludgeon to, to, to uh, push back people in the political sphere from raising amendments, from pushing bills, from having a debate. They will say, well, if you do that, then we're going to have more violence. You can't do that instead of just voting. I mean, they're not 
political conflict and violent conflict are not one and the same thing. They're different things. And I would hope that as Americans, we redouble our commitment to politics and we stop trying to delegitimize and push people out of politics to win debates. James, I appreciate your time this morning. I know it's been uh, a wild uh, day, uh, 24 hours in, in the Capitol. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you're okay. I'm glad, I'm glad things have settled down overnight. Thanks for your time, man. All the best to you. We'll, we'll chat again soon, but take care of yourself. Thanks for having me.